HP, thinkers are great, but doers change the world. Yeah! Robots that can remove explosives from soldiers' paths are reducing the number of wounded. Inevitably, though, some will be harmed in battle. Boston's Vecna Corporation is developing the Bear, a mechanical combat medic that can haul the wounded out of harm's way. It is the most powerful humanoid robot in the world. A wounded soldier caught in the middle of a gun battle or under threat from a sniper. It's a common scenario. The Bear goes out to save him, taking the soldier out of the line of fire. If armor plated, these robots can withstand bullets that would kill a combat medic. This counter weapon was invented by engineer Dan Theobald. You have to have a robot that's small and agile enough to get there. Now once it gets there, you have to have a robot that's strong enough to actually grab that person and get them out of harm's way as quickly as possible. Um, so you need a lot of agility, strength, and speed, and um, this robot is really the first robot in the world to combine those three. The U.S. military has invested $5 million in the bear. Once fully developed, the robot will be included in combat squads. So we've got um, a human-like robot, arms that have many of the degrees of freedom that a human has, but the robot's able to lift 500 pounds. It could pick up an egg or a light bulb without breaking it, but at the same time, lift up a 300-pound object with, a, with an iron grip. To be an innovator, you really have to be willing to try things that other people aren't willing to try. You have to be willing to ask that question, why not? And you can tell what you care about by how you spend your shower time in terms of what you're thinking about when you're in the shower. Um, and you know, for, for myself and for our engineers, our shower time is probably spent the vast majority of it thinking about how can we solve that problem with the robot. And that's the thing, you want your brain working on these problems, because they're hard problems. And if you're not passionate about it, if it's not who you are, and you're not going to create uh, anything new. Theobald and his team constantly invent new military uses for the bear, such as breaking into a car to neutralize a bomb. The bear is meant for the front lines at the initial point of contact, which is where more than half of combat deaths occur. The robot can break down the door, doesn't have to knock, um, and uh, go in there and assess the situation, move debris out of the way. If someone starts shooting at the robot, it's not um, nearly as dangerous as if somebody's shooting at a human. Robots can also serve more mundane, but no less crucial functions. For example, Israel's IAI Corporation has developed the HAV, the hovering air vehicle. It is literally a platform that can float in the air. It can deliver uh, ammunition, it can deliver water, it can deliver batteries to soldiers in the battlefield. And in the desert mountains surrounding Albuquerque, New Mexico, Honeywell is testing a different HAV, the Tarantula Hawk robot, which is already being used in Iraq by the U.S. infantry. The T-Hawk is less than two feet long and can fit into a soldier's backpack. The control stick is simple to use. Like the Israeli HAV, the T-Hawk uses a revolutionary technology to fly. The system actually flies not by thrust coming out the back end or the, the bottom of the aircraft, but it actually flies because of the air being sucked into the duct. Uh, that suction action actually causes lift. There's a region of, of low pressure, if you will, above the aircraft, and that low pressure is causing the aircraft to be pulled into the air rather than pushed into the air. Honeywell engineers came up with the unusual approach in what they call their war room. Floating in the skies, the tarantula's camera gives a bird's eye view of narrow alleyways potentially exposing a hidden sniper or an ambush in waiting. We sat down and brainstormed, how can you make a hovering system safe? Well, one idea was tie a whole bunch of balloons to it. Balloons are safe, right? Uh, another idea was let's make it work like uh, a big vacuum cleaner where it's sucking air and, and blowing air out the back end and that'll make it fly. Uh, another idea, well, well, let's just wrap a big shroud uh, around the rotor. 
uh, and that will make it safe. It's free form thinking to get the creative juices flowing and that brings a lot of energy. I really believe an innovator does have to be a, a, a kid at, at heart, uh, a kid who likes to think outside the box, think of putting things together in ways that you have not before. See, it's kind of like a game of hide and seek. These robots are defensive. They don't fire on enemies, but there is considerable demand to arm robots to make them into mobile machine infantry, which raises the question, should a robot have the ability to take a human life? The military has absolutely no intention of letting technology decide when to take human life. I'll tell you that it will happen, but it will be a slow and it must be a careful path. That robot doesn't necessarily have to use deadly force, where with another human in a kill or be killed situation, your only option is to use deadly force. When we come back, man versus machine, robots go on the offensive. I think the days of the uh, macho fighter pilots are numbered. The future is the drones uh, for, the, for most of the combat missions. 